we've learned how to count atoms by weighing, we can also count molecules. Remember, molecules just some atoms stuck together. For elements, the molar mass is the mass of one mole of atoms. For a compound, the molar mass is the mass of one mole of molecules, okay? Or formula units, because ionic compounds technically don't have molecules. So we convert between mass of a compound and moles of a compound, um, and then we can calculate the number of molecules or formula units from the number of moles. Um, the molar mass of a compound is numerically equal to the formula mass, and that's what we did first thing today, is calculating the formula mass, just the sum of all the atomic masses. So if we calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate, the formula mass means the mass of a formula unit, and so this is going to be in atomic mass units. There's one calcium atom, and so that's going to be 40.08 atomic mass units. There are two nitrogen atoms, and each nitrogen atom is 14.01 atomic mass units. And then how many oxygens are there? Six. Six. And the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Forty point oh eight plus two times fourteen point oh one plus six times sixteen one sixty four point one atomic mass units. That means that one formula of this weighs one hundred and sixty four point one atomic mass units. But up here, the molar mass, the mass of a mole, is numerically equal to the formula mass. So what's the molar mass of calcium nitrate? 164.1 grams. And it's not like magic or anything. One mole of this equals 164.1 grams. Isn't that cool? So atomic mass unit, teeny, teeny, tiny unit, appropriate for measuring the mass of one atom. Gram is way too big for that. So what we did is we invented a dozen that was large enough that gram becomes an appropriate unit for measuring the mass of that funky dozen. So the molar mass, you just take the masses in the periodic table, you add them up in the same way. If it's grams, it's the mass of a mole. If it's atomic mass units, it's the mass of an atom or the mass of a formula unit or molecule, the individual particles. We can use this to convert for compounds. So calculate the mass in grams of 2.48 moles of phosphorus pentachloride. Well, what, we need the formula for phosphorus pentachloride. What's the formula for phosphorus pentachloride? Chapter 5. Phosphorus is P. Cl5. This is a molecular compound. It's got two nonmetals, phosphorus and chlorine. And we got this prefix that tells us there's five chlorines. There's no prefix on the phosphorus because there's one of them. This is the formula. So we have, this tells us, 2.48 moles of PCl5. And we want the mass in grams. So we want to multiply by grams and divide by moles. So the units work out. We need to know the mass of one mole of PCl5. We do that by looking at the, the, what's inside that formula. So there's one phosphorus, so that's 30.97. There's five chlorines, and those are 
So my calculator gave me 208.22. Did anybody else get that? So could you do this without writing anything down? Yeah, you probably could. I would encourage you, though, to write it down. Because then if you get your answer wrong up here, you can go back and double check, did I calculate the molar mass correctly? So this number here is telling us that 208.22 grams of PCL5 is equal to one mole of PCL5. That's a conversion factor. So these sorts of calculations, conversions, we have to go to the periodic table and find our own conversion factor. So it's going to be one mole and 208.22 grams. We got 2.48 times 208.22. And this should have three significant figures. So I'm going to call it 516 grams. Any questions? We can convert between number of molecules and mass of a compound. What's the mass of 8.11 times 10 to the 24th SO2 molecules? So we've got 8.11 times 10 to the 24th SO2 molecules. And we want to convert that to grams of SO2. Well, we're going to need the molar mass of this. Because we've got grams and either moles or molecules, we're going to need molar mass. So off to the side, we've got one sulfur, 32.07, and two oxygens, 16.00, and that comes out to be 64.07. That means that 64.07 grams of SO2 is equal to one mole of SO2. How many molecules of SO2 is that? 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So atoms and molecules are interchangeable? Um, no. But Avogadro's number, a mole, is a number of things. So it depends on what you're counting. So here we're counting molecules, so it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. If we had an element, we'd be counting atoms. You know, it could be donuts or pens or planets or any object. It's a number, a counting number. So 6.07 grams is equal to this many molecules, right? So this is another one where we can skip moles and go straight from molecules to grams, which is what we want to do up here. See, this is what I think is kind of stupid. Molecule is a long word. There's no abbreviation for molecule. Mole is a short word, and they made an abbreviation by dropping the silent E and left us with writing out the word molecule. It's just, you know, one of those things. 8.11 times 10 to the 24th SO2. I'm going to write molecules down here because it's just too stinking long. Molecules times. We want to divide by molecules and multiply by grams. From our calculation of the molar mass, we know that there are 64.07 grams of SO2, and that's equivalent to Avogadro's number of SO2 
molecules. So 8.11 EE24 times 64.07 divided by 6.022 EE23 equals, again with the three sig figs, 863. Any questions?